Hello, and welcome to the Tiny Human Knits podcast. My name is Laura, and I'm coming to you from Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, where I live with my boyfriend, our dog, our cat, and our rabbit. You can find me online as Tiny Human Knits on Instagram, Ravelry, Etsy, and YouTube, and I will have links to everything that I talk about in all of my social medias and everything else down below in the description box. Hello. It has been a little bit longer than I intended to for me to film this. Um, a lot of things were going on. I was very busy. My rabbit was poorly and I don't like it when he's poorly because like when a rabbit's not well there's almost nothing you can do. Um, and this has happened a few times before. If you have a pet rabbit you know that if they stop pooping um, that's a big red flag. And because rabbits are supposed to be just pooping constant and they do. They love it. Love it. But sometimes they get blocked up and if that doesn't resolve itself, they'll die. So, a bit fretful. Again, this has happened before. He's an idiot who will eat whatever's in front of him. I don't know what happened this time. A lot of other times before, it's because he's eaten cat food, which he's gotten a hold of somehow. He gets out of his wherever he's supposed to be and he eats the cat's food and it's not good for him. And it blocks him up. This is a tangent. Ooh, you're welcome. Um, if anyone's got a rabbit, and if this has happened, or if it does happen in the future, what I usually do is I put a little bit of olive oil on a cucumber and try to get him to eat that, and that can help, like, lube him up a little bit. And it's always worked before. Um, he's fine now. He started pooping last night. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, he's doing a lot better, and he's eating, so that was it. <laughs> Didn't mean to tell you that. Anyway... But yeah, that was going on, and yeah, just busy, and I just wasn't feeling the best. I feel okay now. It's very dreary outside today. I do rather like it. Um, it's very gray and rainy and delightful. And yeah, I'm really, really enjoying um, the autumnal time so far. But I'm also really looking forward to winter and the holidays and all that other stuff. But anyway... I am wearing my Marseille sweater today. It is a pattern by Petite Knit. It is a pattern or a project that I wear constantly. Um, usually when I'm getting dressed in the morning, I put on either this sweater, especially now that it's cooler, I either put the Marseille sweater or my Field Day Cardigan by Ozetta, which I also really, really love to wear. They're just so easy. Um, if I'm making a little bit more of an effort, I'll put on one of my other sweaters, like if I'm gonna go outside. Or sometimes I do have um, my, what is it called? My understated that I wore on my last episode. I like to wear that when it's still uh, just a little bit warmer in the house because it's got the shorter sleeves. It's a little bit more airy. So I am full of tangents today. Hopefully that doesn't make this episode forever long. But that's what I'm wearing. It's a lovely pattern. I really enjoy wearing it. There's quite a few patterns that follow this same sort of principle with the back um, shaping, drop shoulder. I think I've said before, I love, love a drop shoulder. I find they fit so comfortably. They're so easy to wear. And uh, it's sort of my preferred style now. I'll make other styles. I honestly can't remember what I said in my last episode. I feel like I already said this before, but like I will make other styles of sweaters so if there's a pattern that I really like that's in the round like or circular yoke I'll knit that if it's a raglan I'll knit it I'm not too fussed about things actually fitting me um I'm not I'm not the type of person who I like giving stuff away I think I said this before I don't mind it at all and actually in that vein um to sort of start us off I'm drinking my very, very milky Earl Grey tea, which I love. Loves the milky tea. I will move on to finished objects. I finished a big one last week. I'm very excited that I finished it because I was, frankly, a little bit sick of it. But I finished my Friday tea by Petit Knit. It is done. It is finished. It is glorious. This beast took up almost three whole skeins of the background color. So this is a fingering weight sweater on three millimeter needles that is a uh, one by one broken rib. So it's one round knit, one round knit, one purl one, which means it takes forever. 
um, but the texture is so gorgeous. It is so nice to just, even just to feel in your hands. I love it so much. I, as I mentioned last time, I was going to knit long sleeves and I did. They are about bracelet length for me and it is lovely. I knit the medium size. I didn't make any other modifications to it besides knitting the long sleeve and the way that I did that, um, I actually looked on Ravelry to see other people's projects to see if anybody else had done long sleeves and there were a few people who had but they all did decreases along the, the sleeve. I didn't want to do that. I wanted just basic one size sleeve all the way down. So what I did is when I got to the point where I wanted to do the cuff, so you do your six rounds of the broken rib um, as it instructs you to. I'm not giving anything away for that really. I did one row of knit one, knit two togethers after that, so I decreased my stitches by 33%. And then after that I did my one by one rib. And I think that looks quite tidy. And I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. Um, that's the only modification that I made to the garment. Where was I going with this? Yes. <laughs> so it fits beautifully. It's so stretchy. Um, it's so comfortable to wear. It's lightweight. Uh, I am just not fully convinced that it suits me. Uh, my boyfriend says it does. I think I'm just being a little bit too sensitive about myself at the moment. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of my own figure. My upper body is a quite small. It's I can wear sometimes an extra small to small um, if it's based on the upper body measurement. Uh, my lower body is a large, sometimes extra large. I have a 43 inch hip, if that makes any sense to anybody. Um, so <laughs> to me, and honestly, like I could probably just block out the body because it's so stretchy, but because it's one by one rib, it wants to pull in. So it's a little bit more form fitting than I would personally like. Nothing to do with pattern. That's just me being fussy about my own, again, my own figure. But I'm, I'll try to wear it a little bit more before I, I decide on anything because the only person I'd want to give this to I think would be my sister Dana because she's got the matching baby one and if she has any more kids it would be really cute if they were wearing matching sweaters and she's definitely bustier than me she's got a significantly larger bust than me but she's quite dainty everywhere else so I think that would fit her really nicely <clears throat> pardon me but I'm not I'm not deciding anything drastic yet I'll decide very hilariously though, I had this draped over my couch yesterday when I was doing a workout and I, I looked over at it and I noticed something that was different from the rest of it and I kept looking at it like, is that stripe longer than the other stripes? It looks bigger. Um, yeah, I, I accidentally knit three rows of this red stripe instead of two and I only noticed it yesterday. <laughs> So uh, I'm not I'm not pulling it back and not a chance. It's like that forever. It's like that forever. So the left arm is one row longer than the right. Oh, I love it so much. It's so nice. I ugh, this texture. I love one by one broken rib. Um, there's another sweater. I can't remember who it's by, but I bought yarn for it. It was my birthday present earlier this year. And it's a two by two broken rib and I'm really excited to knit that but I know it's also gonna take forever because that yarn is also close to a fingering weight oh well I have enough sweaters to get me by I can take a long time to do a lot of things but yeah the background color for this is my pale mushroom colorway and then the stripes are from my jolly holiday mini skein set that I dyed last year and I really really like it I think what I need most uh, to wear with this is probably skirts because um, I don't have any skirts that fit me properly anymore and uh, yeah I think like a nice high-waisted skirt would look really nice with this but we'll see again if I don't wear it I'll give it away I always do that I have given away a hefty amount of hand knits um, and it honestly it doesn't matter that this one took absolutely an astonishing amount of time if it's not getting worn, it doesn't mean anything to me. 
And that's just the way I kind of go about my life. I don't like having things that I'm not using. Um, I don't like trinkets, really. I enjoy some decorative items, especially seasonally decorative items, but mostly what I decorate with are plants, books, hand knits, handmaids. If it's handmade, I like it. I like it a lot. But yes, I think I have, I've got two more finished objects. The first one is an almost, or like a half object. Um, this is a quilt top that I've been working on since my last episode. I meant to have it done earlier than this, but I didn't have time. Time isn't real. So I cut out two versions of this quilt um, at the same time. The first one, pardon me, the first one I showed before, it was the quilt that I made for my cousin. It is the Cozy Cabin quilt, I think. It's a pattern by Modernly Morgan. And so the one I made for my cousin was a very low contrast, grays, pinks, yellows kind of thing. And it turned out super cute. I liked it a lot. Um, but I had this one cut out for myself to keep and it is a very autumnal palette. And this time you'll actually be able to see what it looks like because you can actually see some contrast. There she is. So this um, was a fat quarter set that I got from fatquarter.com. And then the background is some mustard yellow that I had in my stash for quite a while. I think, I don't know if I had anything particular I was using it for. There's a lot of loose threads on this and on me, actually. I only just finished this this morning. So now what I have to do is decide what backing I want to use it with. And then I'll be quilting this one myself as well. Um, I'm thinking I might do a combination of machine quilting and hand quilting. So I'd really like to quilt around the stars, I think, in hand quilting. And then I'll just do some straight stitching along the lines along like these lines here. I think that would look really nice and it'll just be simple, um, simple quilting. That way I can get it done quick and it'll really brighten up the place a little bit. Not that my house is like in desperate need of brightening up. I've got bright stuff around me. I have a tendency to have like a lot of colorful things around and then I'm a huge fan of Christmas lights strung up in the house. But yeah, this is a perfect like lap size quilt. I just remembered something. I have another finished finished object that I made. So I made a quilt for Julie of Sweet Sparrow Yarns. She didn't know about it at all. I don't think she would have ever thought that I'd be making her one. But I did take video of it before I sent it to her. She got it last week. So I will actually insert that right now. This is something that I made for Julie of Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Uh, for no reason. There is no reason for this. Besides the fact that it made me think of her. And also I wanted to help her celebrate uh, the new home that her and her partner bought and just her lo lovely spirit. And so I made her a quilt um, out of some fabric that again made me think of her. Yes, so here it is. I did all of the everything myself, so. It's got wrinkles on it, but that's okay. It'll be fine. So it's like, um, it's like a throw size. It's a lot longer than it is wide, but that's because I meant for it to be like, you know, a shareable width wise, but then if you wanted to use it just by yourself, then it's long enough to cover a fully grown person, which is, it is definitely long enough. So for this pattern, I just cut out four inch squares and you just need three different fabrics. You need, this is kind of like my table topper, you need a dark, a mid and a light and you need twice as much mid as you do either of the light or the dark and then you just do in a sort of gingham-y pattern and then I just use this sort of caramel 
warm brownie delicious color for the background so I just did a grid just just quilted on the grid perfectly fantastic and then I used the um, same mid color for the binding and then I hand sewed it down which I always do the binding that I use that I like the most is a two and a quarter inch uh, width that I fold in half iron and then I sew it to the front and then I fold it over and hand sew it down to the back so I will be sending this off as soon as she sends me her new address and I'm super happy with it I kind of <laughs> a part of me wishes she'd turn into a huge cow and make me mad so I wouldn't have to send this to her, which is stupid because I made it for her for no reason. Um, but I really, really like the way it turned out and I can always make myself one if I want to. But yeah. Very, very happy with that. And yeah, I did all of the piecing, the quilting, the everything by myself, which is a rather pleasing thing to do, I think. So... I hope she loves it. I think she will. Every house needs as many quilts as you can fit into it. Just in case you're wondering. Okay, bye. So that quilt was a real joy to make. Making something for someone you know is going to deeply appreciate it, even if they had no idea they were getting it, is so fun. And it was such an easy thing to make. Um, so yeah, that was really enjoyable. And she really liked it. <laughs> and so did her dog. So my last finished object is a pair of socks, which is going, it's a sample pair that's, it's a sample pair of socks of a colorway that's going to be getting put in the shop this Friday. So October 21st at 1 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. I will have four different colorways and I will show you them all to you now, but first I will show you this one. So this is a new colorway. And it is called Sweater Weather. So these will be in 50 gram self striping sets with the 20 gram um, contrast color. And so I posted a picture of these on Instagram and I've had quite a lot of uh, interaction with that post. So I just want to say that if when this gets put into the shop, if it sells out quickly and I get requests for more, I will absolutely be putting more in the shop right away. It won't be delayed. I'll dye them up immediately. But this is sweater weather. This is quite a fun color. It's quite fun to dye this one as well. And then the other colorways that are going into the shop, I'll just add that here because it's just going to be a self-striping update. Um, I will be having Harvest. This is a colorway from last year that I really like. Be having Harvest, and then I will also have Whatever You Need to Be. This is a colorway from February of this year. And these will be sock sets as well. And then I will also be having, uh, as a separate listing, I won't have them as sets this time, I'll be having um, the drawstring bags of the fabric that the colorway is based on. That will also be in the shop. And then the last one, the last colorway is actually a work in progress that I am currently working on. And that one is called Late October. And they will be sock sets as well with the blue contrast color. This one I just need to finish up the sample for. I'm doing my usual sock recipe, nothing fancy. But that's my first work in progress. I never really say much about my socks just because they're literally all the same and I'm always working on them. But my first, pardon me, my next work in progress, I suppose, is a oldie. After I finished my Friday tea, I decided I wanted to get rid of all of my current works in progress that I've been working on. I want to clear them off my palette and start fresh because there is something I'm a sort of a challenge that I want to do over the next year and it's actually copied almost exactly from Jackie of the Woolen Oaks podcast and Instagram page who I really enjoy talking to. She's delightful, so is her dog, 
but she posted her first YouTube episode about a project she wanted to do where she was going to try and knit half of her stash over the next year. And as, as much as I would like to knit half of my stash, that is absolutely not possible. I have way too many sweater quantities to be able to knit half of my, I also have just a ton of like Knit Picks palette and whole scarn and all of those like fingering weight ones. I'd never be able to knit half of it in a year. But what I decided I wanted to do as an equivalent is I want to knit 10 kilograms of my stash out of my stash. And so the way that I'm thinking about it is it has to be stash. That doesn't include sock samples because that's not really old stash. That's new colorways and stuff. And also anything I buy over the next year, that amount gets subtracted from the amount that I've knit out of it, if that makes any sense. So like if I knit two and a half kilograms of my stash yarn and then I buy half a kilogram, that will equal out to only two kilograms out of my stash. So I'm hoping that like makes me hesitate a little bit more on what I'm bringing into my stash. And I just want, I have so many beautiful sweater quantities that I really want to knit. And there's quite a few, and this might be kind of like a little cheat. Uh, there's quite a few sweater quantities that I have for my boyfriend. So I'm kind of thinking I might start off knitting him a few more sweaters, even though he has seven already. Seven sweaters. He's so spoiled. Um, I might knit some of those just to get like a good chunk of my stash out. Cause as, um, he's, He's not a huge guy, but he's quite barrel chested. So I do have to use quite a bit of yarn for his sweaters. So that might be a quick way for me to get quite a few kilograms out. More tangents. This is just tangents. But so yeah, that's why that's how I'm kind of wanting to um, knit along with Jackie because I enjoy her so much, um, but not in the same fully the same capacity. So yeah, I really really kind of excited for that. It'll be fun. I want to see how much I can knit out of my stash. But anyway, that was a long story to talk about nothing. So I'm trying to clear my needles so I can start that because these next two I'm not going to count because they were already on my needles. It doesn't matter. But the first one I pulled out again is my Gartrell Crew by Tana Slavely. And it is a like color blocked or striped or whatever you want to use it for crew neck shirt or sweater. Oh, I'm talking so much. I always talk so fast. We're in a hurry. But the last time I had it on the podcast, I was on this blue stripe right here. So I'm knitting the 40 inch size, which is going to be oversized for me. And not by like a ton, but like a couple inches. And it's technically supposed to be knit um, flat. The front and back sides are supposed to be knit flat and then seamed together. I just did it in the round until the sleeve separation just because it's easier for me. Wouldn't have mattered either way, but... But, anyway, <laughs> so sorry. I actually have finished the front and the back panels. So... This is essentially a raglan that you knit in pieces instead of all in the round because you want the stripes. I mean, you could take the numbers and do it in the round. That would be perfectly easy. Um, but it's kind of for the stripes to be offset. So what I'm doing is I've got the front and back done and it's delightfully rainbow. But I actually have one of the sleeves almost finished as well. I've gotten to the point of starting to do the cap shaping. I hope this will be visible here. This is my sleeve, still attached to the yarn, and it's going to match up right here. So the sleeve and the body are going to be offset, which I, I love it. I love it so much. It's very bright. I am, um, I really like, I'm not much for rainbows or bright colors really, but something like this, especially with the tweed to carry it all together, it just, it's so lovely and I'm really enjoying knitting it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to wear, especially in the gloomy time of year where everything's a bit gray. It's just so nice. So these are all my own hand dyed yarns. Um, the only thing though is they're not really, 
There's two in here that I actually sell. Uh, they were mostly all samples for colorways that I got earlier this year, but I do have Hot Lavel and Black Cherry in here, but the rest are all just sampled colors. So if you ever want to try yarn dyeing, this is a very easy way that you could use up a project. So I use just a DK weight tweed and then um, just some Dharma dyes. So I get all my yarn from wooltodiefor.com. They are an absolutely lovely company to shop from. And then all my dyes are from Di Dharma Dye Works, various brands. You can figure it out. But yeah, that'd be a really easy way. You could even just do a couple skeins and do some kids versions. I have, I'm going to have so much yarn left. I'm probably going to be knitting a few for my, probably my nephews and then two of my, I don't know. I haven't figured it out. I'm also shouldn't say that. I don't know, but I'm going to be making, I think at least one more. And then I want to use the rest of them for a uh, blanket, just whatever's left over. I'm going to have lots. My last uh, knitted work in progress is another oldie. Um, I pulled this out because I needed something to knit on that I didn't have to look at at all. Because um, we were having a fire the other day and it was so dark outside that I couldn't see anything. So I just needed something that I could literally just knit back and forth. So I picked up my Dark Cloud by Hoagy Locatelli. And I'm just working on the back portion right now. So the last time I showed this was when I, when I was right here and I had just added a new ball uh, last week. And this is delightfully easy to work. It's literally garter stitch for the most part. There's a little bit of shaping, but for the most of the garment, it's just garter stitch, so knitting back and forth. And I find it fits people so well. All of the projects I've seen on Ravelry, like they just, they look so nice and it's so comfortable to wear. If you've been here for a while, you'll know that I've already knit one of these. I actually knit my first one a few years ago. That one doesn't matter. Um, I knit one for myself last year and I put it in the washing machine. Uh, I put it in the washing machine on a cold cycle, on, on a gentle cold cycle. And uh, what I didn't realize is the alpaca in this felt like crazy. So that one got very felted. And it was very sad but I had some yarn left over from it um, I am using the City Tweed Erin in the snowbank colorway from Knit Picks it is so soft it's 55% merino wool 25% super fine alpaca and 20% donegal tweed it's so soft and it's so comfortable to wear but yeah, I had some left over. I had to order some more because I knew I was just gonna, I wanted to make another one because it was so nice to wear. And uh, yeah, this one won't go in the washing machine. If it does, I'm not allowed to make any more. <laughs> That's it, revoked. But I'm almost to the point of doing a little bit of shaping on the bottom and then I'll be picking up the stitches for the front and knitting back and forth again. This is a very easy pattern. It would be a perfect beginner pattern and it's so comfortable, it's so comfortable. I'm knitting this on five millimeter needles and it feels amazing. My Gartrell crew is knit on four millimeter needles with DK and knitting that after knitting the Friday tee on three millimeter needles. It's so nice. It's so much nicer. It's so much nicer. It's so fast. It's so fast. So I've got two more works in progress that are also like from the archives here um, just because I want to work on a few different things. I like to work on a few different things at the same time and these are ones that I would really like to have. So the first one is a cross stitch and it's a cross stitch I have actually done before. It's called Strawberries by Stitch Rovia and I only have a black and white photo so I'm actually going to put up a picture here of the one that I've already made. Um, <clears throat> I made this one for my mother-in-law for Christmas three years ago, almost three years ago, and I, as soon as I, while I was making it, I knew I wanted one for myself so I actually have the exact same frame that I put that one in as well. I got it from Michaels. They still have it if you're interested and so I got the frame already and I've, uh, I, I really just wanted one of my own. 
because it's so cute and it's also really fun to stitch. So this is where I'm at right now. And this is my, <laughs> this is my lovely um, yarn or my needle minder. I got one of those for myself and then one of those for Candace from uh, Transitory because it reminded me of her. <laughs> So this is where I'm at. I am stitching it on 18 count um, oatmeal Ada, which I get from Michaels on the big rolls. Um, it's my favorite to stitch on and it's quite inexpensive if you get it on the big one. And yeah, I'm just working on this a little bit every day. It's really nice for me to work on a cross stitch when I, um, when I, Cross stitch for me is something that you have to pay attention to, but you don't have to think about in, for me. And I find that really relaxing sometimes. It kind of engages your brain and lets you not think about other stuff. But I'm really enjoying it quite a bit. I'm going to try and work on this a bit over the weekend. I think take a little bit of a break. I'm working all the time. And my last work in progress is also going to be just a slow, sloggy sort of project. But this was sitting in a box. This has been sitting in a box for probably two years. I started this three years ago, three winters ago. And it is the Cozy Memories blanket, I believe it's called. The crochet one. And... Considering I started it three years ago, it should really be further along than it is, but it's not. It's just got sat in a box, and this is how much progress I've made. It's, it's fine. It's fine. I made it quite, when I started it, I made it quite long. Like, this goes over our queen-size bed quite, quite a ways. And I did it on purpose. That's what I wanted. Because I have made myself so many magic cake and magic ball amounts and i have quite a few mini skeins besides i just need to work on it it's ridiculous so in my version i'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook just a basic i think this is a tulip one no it's a red heart even just this boring gray one and I'm actually doing um so it's a three cluster stitch pattern it's a free pattern you can find it like anywhere um but I'm actually doing half double crochets instead of double crochets because I wanted it to be quite dense and warm and I'm not being too picky about what colors come in what order and um I'm getting sewing thread on absolutely everything so yeah, I'm not being too picky about that, and I don't care if they end up making like a few rows in one color. It's a blanket, and I don't care. <laughs> it's probably going to get just destroyed by the dog when it's finished, if it ever gets finished. But yeah, I'm. it's really nice to do when I just need something really mindless to just pass a few minutes with, because I just pick it up whenever, and it just sits in a basket now and not a box where it can just get forgotten about forever. But yeah, I thought that'd be nice to bring out now that it's starting to get cold and we need more cozy. I fill my house with blankets, it's my goal in life. But yeah, that was my last kind of work in progress. I probably won't show that until I actually make a good amount of progress on it. I'll, um, I'll add a progress keeper to what I showed you this time. And then see how much I can actually do because I am a workaholic and I don't actually have like a ton of time when I'm not working. Um, it may seem like it because I do, I do a lot of stuff, but the thing about it is, is I don't know how to relax. I've had a couple people ask me like, what's your scheduling or management style for getting all the stuff done? Um, a lack of ability to sit down uh, helps when you want to get a lot of stuff done. I also have, um, I can get myself to do things really easily. So if I'll, if I put myself in front of my sewing machine, I will just sew. 
Also, a big trick for me, if I want to pay attention to what I'm currently working on, um, I put on my wireless headphones and I'll watch something I've never seen before on my phone. So I can't look at my phone when I'm working on something. Because if I have the ability to look at my phone, a lot of times it's, I find it very distracting. I'm just busy always doing something. It's kind of annoying sometimes because I get really tired. <laughs> But I can't help it. I can't help it. I've been like that for way too long now. But yeah, that's that's my way of things. Ugh, getting real boring here at the end. <laughs> anyway, I have to go and wind up some mini skeins and label up some yarn for the update on Friday. And I will see you all in my next episode. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your week and enjoy the weather. Oh, nope, no, bye.